Hello and welcome to 52 Miniatures. My name is Alex. I've only just returned from the UK visiting Midwinter Minis, Guy and Hattie. Together we went to a convention called Salute in London. We've recorded a podcast. The first installment of this Midwinter Minis and 52 Miniatures podcast is over on Midwinter Minis YouTube channel. So please go check out that first installment. This is the second installment of the very same podcast. And uh, for those of you that are here visiting from Midwinter Minis, hello, I'm Alex, and welcome. Uh, for the rest of you, please check out the first installment. And this is part two. So, you know, we packed up our bits and we sort of said goodbyes to you the people that were still remaining got mm. a few final photos with mm. people and mm. then we went out for a really nice dinner with um mikey and georgie mm. from hellstorm mm. wargaming and uh with obviously Anne, and steve and hattie and yep. you and i yep and uh, not forgetting anyone am i no that was it no mm. and uh we we were like where are we gonna go where are we gonna go <laughs> and, and mikey was like i know a place yeah. i know a place yeah. it's it's like 15 20 minutes away yeah, and we just, were like just over that way sure we've all had like a pretty intense day of like doing mm. you know chatting hungry chatting. let's just have yeah. a nice stroll mm. across the um the thames yeah. you know out in the fresh air mm -hmm. and it was the sun was yeah, shining it was, it was a really nice day yeah. And so we went for a walk and we walked for 20 minutes and then Mikey was like, it's just another 20 minutes this way. We're like, Mikey. No, it was fine. We were great. We had nice yeah. burgers and hot yeah. dogs and yeah. a bit of beer and yeah. it was really nice. Yeah. Um, and then the the cool thing though is when we came back, yeah, we all sort of uh, um, spontaneously agreed that it would be a very, very good idea to go on the cable car. Indeed. Across all, the, Thames. All the Thames. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it was just sort of sunset. Yeah. And... Uh, it, it was one of the better things. Uh, it was beautiful, wasn't it? It was, it was really decided nice. that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was lovely. Yeah. Very nice, spontaneous bit of fun. Yeah, you did a live stream from from up there. Very briefly, you? yeah. A, a two and a half minute live stream of everyone a, shouting yeah, in the cable a bit, car. A, a, bit, a bit chaotic. I don't think people were expecting that. I said I don't think people were expecting that from like a midwinter news live stream on uh, on Instagram because <laughs> it was like you know it started it and it was like four hundred people joined and then yeah. and then it was like just absolute chaos and it was like 60 people watching i was like oh no <laughs> yeah so if you if you watch that mm. sorry yeah, we, we, we <laughs> we're apologize, all very but, we're all very excited um, it was it was just uh, we so were, much fun we were in the sky we were in the sky car. yeah mm. it was a bit short it was fun though maybe that yeah it was yeah but you're you know you're like alpine you mm. know nordic mm. sensibilities mm. you expect massive mountain mm. peaks and things rather than just going over a river it was very yeah, cool you got that expectation yeah, yeah. saw the millennium dome mm -hmm. or the o2 mm -hmm. as it's called and it was now. just like sort of almost past sunset but there was there was still like a, a red and gold yeah, and red yeah, and, yeah yeah and all the lights came on and mm -hmm. there was blues and purples yeah. and uh, I, um, I see the world in color yeah um, I see um, the well in color as well. There's um, a few less. Just, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, uh, how dare you? Uh, and there was that <laughs> giant statue. I didn't even realize it was there. What is it? I've got no big idea. Gold thing you, you, with you no head. You just pointed, and I'm like, why is there? Yeah, it was like Colossus. Yeah, walking out with no head. Uh, and you'd imagine it sort of would actually start to move it, and, and trash tiny fruit fly trash, in my face. Trash things. Yeah, but it, it looked a bit warhammery, right? Because yeah. it had a yeah. scenic base and yeah. everything. It's been an impressive thing. Yeah, I'll try and find it, whatever it was, and put a picture on the screen in mm. case you're still watching for some reason. And then we um, kind of almost got the feeling that we weren't going to be able to get home. Oh, yeah. We mm. we were wandering back and we sort of, uh, we went by the big entrance and we were like, no, we came out of a side door from yeah. the car park. Mm. Um, so we can just go back to that side door and go back into the car park and then go... And we walk, and the, uh, the XL is a massive building. Yeah. It's huge. It's yeah. like larger than a stadium. It's mm. enormous. And we walk, it's we, empty, yeah, empty side it's street, like empty side street, street like along the Thames. Few lights, all the doors are closed. Everything just looks like you know. And as we were got going, home, yeah, kind of as we were kind of going on and on, I was like, I wonder if the car park has a closing time. And we're like, oh no, <laughs> and it was like approaching nine o'clock or whatever. We're like, ah, mm. I'm sure it's fine. Mm. And then we sort of walk up and we're like, oh no, that gate looks very closed. So we have to turn all the way around again yeah. and go back, walk through the entrance. But it was fine. It was Everything fine. Was fine. We got home mm -hmm. with our stash and yes. things, and uh, yeah. it was a great day. Mm -hmm. uh, 
very tired by the end of it. Yeah. Just all the, it's like when you got that sort of fizzy feeling, mm. like your brain is starting mm. to sort of, it's done a lot. I'm, I'm done now. To think a lot. You, uh, yeah. you need to stop. Yeah. I, but I, I think the last time I got that feeling um, was when, I don't know, not even, not even kind of uh, more difficult exams, but you know, like when you're sort of 15, 16 in the UK, you do GCSEs uh, and you do, well, I did, I think there was one day where I did five exams, mm. like, you know, one hour or one yeah. and a half hour exams. That's yeah. your entire day. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of that, I was just like, ah, my brain, mm. like I can feel it's been mm. doing things. My brain is tired. Mm. Yeah, I had that, um, I had that feeling. Mm. No, and I think it's what I, I think, because I, I thought about yesterday, like when we, when we were having dinner, I was like, I felt my brain was like, it's done now. Mm. And, uh, and as soon as you have one beer, you're like, oh, here we yeah, go. That, that, yeah, that's like, it's, <laughs> You're suddenly like, like five down yeah, and you're like, it was yeah. just one, it was but just one. I've, I've, I've actually contemplated it. I think at times, even though my uh, English is is good, uh, it's still sort of like my second language. Mm. So like having a full day of just using the English brain mm. uh, is a little bit more taxing yeah, than, yeah. than using the Swedish it's brain. Extra level. Yeah, yeah, there's another sort of absolutely translational yeah. effect going on. Yeah. Um, but uh, my my kids look stunned when you spoke to them in Swedish. Everyone just got quiet. Yeah, like, yeah, what yeah. Just, what just happened? Yeah, right. yeah. And then you were like trying to teach them what the word for dog was, and yes. they were like, "No, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say uh, that word." Uh, that's, <laughs> it sounds just, silly. Yeah, <laughs> that's very funny. Mm. Strange man is just making that up. Right yeah, now. yeah, I'm yeah. Not going along yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. that's good. I'm always amazed at bilingual people or people that can speak multiple languages. I've, you know, I've worked for companies based, I've lived in France for a year. Mm. I lived in the, in the Besançon for a year, which is a, um, so you spoke French, a town in France in the kind of Alpine mm. East. Um, I speak bad French. Yeah. I understand French really well. Yeah. I speak it very badly. Yeah. I've never been very good at languages. Mm. I try. Mm. Um, and then I ended up working for a French company for three years. Mm. And again, like going, like visiting to and from, going to France t for work, you know, a couple of times a month. I was still so bad at mm. speaking, speaking French. Mm. My accent's really good and mm. I can understand it really well, mm. but my speaking is just terrible. Mm. I just can't get the, you know, I, I can, I can formulate what I want to say, but by the time I've thought about it, the moment's gone. The moment's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, mm. which is no, I, I can get that. I can sometimes sort of um, a strange feeling of like while having a conversation is like my there's a Swedish part of the brain that's doing something else. Yeah, it's like two things are happening at the same time almost. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, completely different story that mm. um, tangent tangent. I oh. mean, we're at the we're at the tangent part of the. Um, the podcast now. Oh yeah, we've we've, yeah. we've done the Wh whoever, whoever's managed to come on. Yeah, they're in for the long haul. They'll, for they'll, they'll long. be for whatever we start yeah, exactly. talking about. <laughs> for, all, for all the good we've, stuff. We've we've spoken end. about so many interesting topics yeah. though while you've been here, yeah. and I've been like, you know, we both uh, have strangely quite similar background in terms of uh, working mm. within sort of the music industry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Visual arts appreciation. Yes. And, like. Yeah. 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 I mean. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend that I'm on any level uh, your peer in terms of uh, photographic or film skill because mm. uh, there was a beautiful moment actually at Salute yesterday where you were speaking to MS Paints and I was kind of, I was the like, end, these, yeah. the, like the, the cinematography skill mm. between these two people speaking to each other right yeah. now would put like a lot of production companies to shame. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know if you're familiar uh, as a listener or a viewer right now with mm. um, Dave. Hey, Dave from MS Paints, who's mm. a spectacularly uh, talented hobbyist, but also a ridiculously talented um, filmmaker and uh, cinematographer. Yeah, yeah photographer. As, as, as in filmmaker, as in exactly there is a storytelling as well. Yes. So there's the cinematography, but yes. there's also a storytelling yes. uh, part um, of it. That you know, one man show. Yeah. Uh, absolute once in a generation talent mm. so i very much recommend you go and check out his channel mm. if you don't already know it i'm sure you will because you're a very erudite and yeah. uh, clever and dare i say attractive person watching well done you <laughs> um 
But yeah, go and check his channel out. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you talking to each other about sort of techie things. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you should be doing a podcast with him, to be honest. You'd yeah, have, no, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need to go up and hang out with him at yeah, some point. I actually realized I was there um, last New Year. I was mm. up in, in where, he's, where he's from uh, with my son. Um, but we were there on holiday. Mm -hmm. And I think at some point, I think he still does or has done, worked in a, a game store there. Mm. or something some, yeah, some kind of so. store and mm -hmm. i think i was actually in that store yeah but in hindsight only realized that maybe dave was there mm. but no i i uh, he's he's a super nice guy so definitely like to hang out hang out more but i mean i've i've uh i've thought about that with like different people uh, different channels people to do different uh style of like hobby content mm. um a lot of us have some kind of uh, um, superpower. Mm. We all have a lot of us yeah. have like different superpowers. Sure. Right? So some are like really great painters or some mm -hmm. are like uh, just great at, you know, telling stories or yeah. remembering lore or, yes. or, you know, and some are just technically skilled mm -hmm. or knows how to their way around cameras or whatever. It's mm -hmm. just um, everyone sort of has a little bit of their thing. Uh, I yeah. found a lot of people doing what we do have music backgrounds yeah 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 uh emil obviously you and i yeah um mikey yeah some bands yeah uh, there's tons uh either music you know they are musically inclined or they were actually in the industry yeah in some format yeah whether it was yeah, black a performer craft. Or a, yeah, yeah exactly yeah um uh you know luke from geek gaming yeah Phoenix. yeah, yeah. He's... come back luke the come hobby, back the hobby needs you mm. i've messaged you on discord like 300 times you're not answering come back <laughs> come back <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it's true um and i mean obviously my i mean i worked uh as a still photographer and also with moving pictures for like 15 to 20 years give me um, a, give me a little um chronological, chronological thingy. breakdown of your your progression your your professional progression of yeah. jobs over the years that i think that'd be interesting for people it's uh, not something that people talk about so my the the time in my life when i made the most money mm. uh because this will put things into perspective and into the type of perspective that sometimes uh you choose uh working with things you like mm. sometimes uh, as, as uh, an offering when it comes to what fills your wallet was my first job mm. uh, working as a cleaner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was, yeah, I was, can believe it. That was when I made the most cash. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked during sort of uh, high school. Mm. I worked the weekends because I, I moved away from, I moved out of home when I was 17, mm. I think. And so I had to pay rent. Yeah. You know, so I, I worked um, after there was a few years there and I went, I ended up in living in Australia mm -hmm. and in Australia, I started working as a bartender mm -hmm. and um, after a few years there, I was like, well, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Yep. Kind of a thing. Classic. And I've always had photography as a hobby mm. for very long. I think I got my sort of granddad's first camera when I was like my son's age, like eight or 10 or, mm. you know, something like that. I always just thought it was really fun to see the world through a viewfinder. And we're talking in the age of analog cameras. Oh right? yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. yes. Not digital. Uh, there was no, uh, I mean, your granddad's camera, <laughs> it's, mm. it's not going to happen. Even when I was a kid, there was, there <laughs> yeah. was no digital. No, no, no. Um, but so when I moved away from Australia, I, I took that, you know, well, I, if, if, I would really like to work with photography, mm. so I'm going to give it a shot. Mm. And at that point in time, it's not as common anymore, but uh, more sort of successful photographers used to have uh, assistants. Yes. Uh, it's still common if you are really high up in the hierarchy, but even then, you know, usually if you were a photographer, you had an assistant because mm. it was a more labor intensive job because everything was still analog. Mm -hmm. And so I started working as uh, an assistant for different photographers. So it's like being an apprentice, basically. Yeah. And um, I did that for about four years. Nice. So it's kind of like going to university, mm. only... Uh, but you didn't go to university. But I didn't. No, me neither. No. Mm. Interesting. And 
After that, I started my own sort of business. And I don't know, it probably took three or four years before um, there was uh, probably for about two years, I think I work extra in a bar or something like that yes. to actually pay the bills. Mm. And, uh, and then it sort of started to become a little bit more of a, a thing that I could actually call a job mm -hmm. and actually make money out of. Yes. And then I've just been doing that. Cinematography and photography. Yeah. And the cinematography entered when, um, when you actually started to be able to film off of DSLR cameras. Mm -hmm. I think there was a Canon Mark something, Canon 5D yeah, Mark 5D, II yeah. or whatever it was. The, it was. was the breakthrough one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, was that the first one that could film in 4K? That there was like no, no, no. I don't think sorry, so it, was 4K. it was the it was the first one that was 1080p, right? Yeah, at, something at, like um, that. At 60 fps, yeah. I think that yeah. was the first one where it was like this is this a actually thing looks that you right. can yeah, yeah film on and yeah, yeah do half speed stuff. On. Um, and then that started started happening, and mm. all of a sudden you could offer clients film material yeah. as well as still material. Uh, and as it's a business in like constant change, because you go from I've gone from an analog world uh, to a digital world, to a world filled of like uh, the internet, mm. <laughs> which means that people just take pictures, yes. uh, upload them on sites on the internet where you can buy them and use mm -hmm. them instead of having to ask your local photographer to like, I need a picture of a tree. Yeah. So I need to hire a photographer to take a picture of a tree. All mm. of a sudden there was an internet and you can just buy a picture of a tree yeah. for like a couple of pounds. Mm. Um, and then, and then came the like digital camera revolution, which mm -hmm. meant that you didn't even have to buy it off the internet. You could just buy your own camera yeah. and go and take your own picture of the tree. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now we've, and now we've the, entered the, the, the age of AI. Yeah, which is interesting. Mm. Uh, so it's just, it's been very sort of uh, from going from what would have been a relatively static period from like the 1950s to the 1990s. Mm. The business probably looked rather similar, similar yeah with the small tech advances yeah, yeah. just uh the different newer cameras faster cameras but it's all like using the same type of film for, mm. for ages yeah and then in the same period it's totally turned on its head yeah 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 from like the 80s to now essentially yeah. it's yeah. bonkers the, uh, the speed at which the changes happen mm. Um, sort of very similar to, similarly to something like the music industry or, mm. or whatever. And, um, and yeah, so when all of a sudden I started filming things, mm -hmm. uh, just because, uh, it, it became a thing, there was a lot of photography work disappeared. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, more film work was wanted. Yeah. And so I started filming things. So it's just a competition thing as well, isn't it? The people who are your peers will get into it as well. So yeah. you're like, well, if they're doing it, I have yeah. to do it as well. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I'll yeah. lose out on the clients. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so then I started filming and then, you know, it's, uh, um, I was talking to someone at Salute, sort of asking me about cameras mm. and like settings and mm -hmm. light. And, and obviously there's, there's like so many things in theory that I could say or try and teach people yeah um it's like three but decades it's of like, trial and error and yeah knowledge of you can, yeah. i can you know if you, i use a phone to film something it still kind of looks like it's me holding yeah. the camera yeah or if it, i've got you know a day to film a scene with lights and cameras for hundreds of thousands of pounds it'll mm -hmm. still kind of look like it's me filming it yeah um it's it, i did you did make me laugh when you uh you know, I was, we were sort of chatting about a little bit of gear mm. and you were like, oh, I've just brought my travel rig with me, which is what we're currently filming on now, yes. which is why everything looks exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> we're not filming on my normal setup. Um, yeah, your travel rig is, is uh, a beast of a setup mm. uh, with like a 50 year old cinema lens. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. excessive. I'm going to say it's excessive. It's, it's excessive. But uh, it's you a, get good results with it. Rig. Yeah. But in my hands, it would be useless almost. Yeah. It's a terrible camera for it. Like, it's got no stabilization. It's got mm. no autofocus. It's got no... Although I did get one shot of you yesterday across the road. You did? And I it, pulled the focus on you crossing the yeah. road. So, yeah. you know. And it looked very pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that, that's the thing as well. People ask me, like, what camera do you use? Because mm. they, they, they see the stuff I do. And obviously, they, you know, want to 
to aspire to get mm. something similar. Um, but like my cameras, your, cam you, it's, your cameras it's, it's, of such high quality that I'm sure some people will have noticed the single fruit fly that's been like <laughs> circling and just making its way around the studio. So if you see it, yeah. you know, timestamp it. Mm. <laughs> His name's Mark. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so it's 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 a it's a tricky thing sometimes when mm. when people ask that kind of stuff. But it's um, obviously I've been actually when I started making YouTube videos, I promised myself to do my absolute worst because mm. <laughs> I knew where it was going to go. Yeah, like I'm always like that. Whatever I start doing something, and I just slowly start exagger exaggerating instead mm. of just being like I could have been like I'll just use my phone or whatever. Yeah, but. And I really tried, I tried, and I tried really hard to not make anything fancy mm -hmm. because I knew that I could try and make something fancy, but that means these videos are going to take ages to sure. make. Um, and at about the arrival of the pandemic, I got bored because I didn't have any work. And I started putting more effort into yeah. or just like not, yeah, not effort, the nice more time. There was yeah. more time. And I was like, what I'm going to do with my time, I'll yeah. just put that time into the, into the videos. Mm. Um, and that's sort of when they, they changed style a little bit, uh, got more narrative, mm. got more sort of, I hate the word cinematic, but cinematic. Um, your videos are very cinematic though. Mm. The way you, you know, uh, you demonstrate your art in your videos beyond what you're painting, the way you present the things, mm. the way you film things, the way you light things, the mm. way you shoot things is just exceptional. Thank you. Uh, I always enjoy your videos Thank you. and you, your videos are, I'm not saying I don't watch everyone else's videos, but there's only so many hours in the day mm. whenever you put a video out, unless it's about something incredibly niche, I mm. watch your videos mm. because um, I just enjoy the, even if I'm not super invested in what you're doing, yeah. it's always a beautiful visual experience mm. and your, um, I know there might be some people who are watching this that have never seen any of Alex's videos and mm. I would recommend you go and watch them because mm. they are very lovely experiences no matter which one you watch. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just because mm. you obviously put a huge amount of effort into the presentation. I, yeah, I do. And it's like what it's you're doing. Yeah. And, and uh, it's not necessarily, uh, it's not for me, it's not necessarily difficult things to do. Mm. Uh, it's it's just um, a second they take time. After, yeah. So... Uh, a lot of it's like I, I never, and a standard I, I never, I never well, like yeah. Yeah, consider where I put my camera and what's in it. I just do it mm. and then I film it, and then people say afterwards like, "Wow, that was a really nice shot," which it probably is. But that's just because I've put cameras in places for fifteen years, and mm -hmm. I don't, you know, you don't have to think about it. Mm. Um, but what I do sometimes worry about because I um, really enjoy your videos. Oh. Um, I, I, I sometimes get the vibe of my own eccentricity. <laughs> like how how much am I just? Are you are you always like, what is that angle? What are you no, doing? What is never, that light? No, it's never, so blown never, out. No? Never. I don't I don't have any of that kind of filter ever. I'm like, this is a great like, YouTube video. Mm. You know, you should, you should have like a blue light coming mm, from the side. Exactly. Really add to why the depth. Isn't, yeah. Where's the where's the slider? Where's yeah. the where's the yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but like the the sort of um, the scale between like what what was what is the product actually for? Because mm. like we the other day you were uh, working with Hattie of recording a voiceover, mm. um, and you were like, "Well, we just we forgot to sort of add like an introduction, mm. like who are we and what are we? Mm. What's the project about?" Mm. And that's like a thing that I forget in almost every video because I, I'm in this like, I'm going to tell a story. You know, I have this scene where I walk in slow motion and blah, blah, blah. The lights do yeah. this and that. And it can be like 15 minutes of the video has passed and you still don't really know what it is. My project yeah, is about we were having why this conversation. I'm doing it. Yeah, we were having this conversation yeah. the other day and I said, it was when you were, when it was literally as we were doing that. Yeah. And I, yeah, I was saying to Hattie, I was like, I always try and imagine... Um, not necessarily that your target audience is watching, that maybe someone's no. mum is watching or yep. someone's kid is watching Ooh. and they don't know what's going on. Yep. So like introduce the concept of what you're doing in like super basic terms and who you are and why they should care. Yeah. That's like key things yeah. to 
hooking people yeah. into knowing and and if you another really key thing is like predicting issues yeah. <laughs> that you might run into yeah. during the video because yeah. then that kind of keeps people engaged because yeah. they're like ah is, that, is this yeah. problem going to happen and mm. you know that's just uh, there's a little quick tip for you mm. um no, and I, and I always forget that. And, no. and at, at some point, but I sort of joke to yeah. you that sometimes I, I, because I, I do, I watch your videos, and yeah. sometimes I click on one of your video videos, and then I'll, five minutes later, I'll be like, "What am I watching again? Like, what did I, <laughs> what did I choose to watch?" Going? Yeah, he hasn't yeah. even started painting yeah, anything this yet. Guy He's just walking out through walking. a forest. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and, and I'm, I don't yeah. regret it, but no, I'm just I, like, this is nice. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. But I, I sometimes <laughs> consider like. Because we do publish it on a certain medium, mm. like it is YouTube, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, you know, enjoy your content not only because you make tanks with buttholes on them. Uh, <laughs> only because, <laughs> kind of, no, but I mean, there's, you do very much have that side of things where it's it's uh, creative in a way that not many other people do, and it's fun yeah. and like playful. Yeah, it's not taking things. And deadly serious because this is a hobby we're supposed to be having fun that's yes. like the, the the guideline yeah and uh it's accessible you're very accessible mm, thank you. and i think that's like a great uh, probably one of the best things that you can be because it like entices people to do keep mm. doing the hobby and mm -hmm. get interested in the hobby mm. and it's like wow i i could actually do that yeah whereas i kind of sometimes feel that i'm in a little bit of a like eccentric elitist thing that might be difficult for people to like understand like you said what's actually going on here and then sometimes i think well i think a lot of people just watch them as company yeah while they're painting yeah. and then it doesn't really matter and then it's the perfect vibe because yeah. your your presentation is very relaxed yeah you've got a very kind of uh kind of measured uh sort of nice pace to your delivery mm. of of everything you do yeah it's but, a it's a refreshing I, I imagine it's a very refreshing change i'm not um saying that like all north american uh creators in our field have a very different vibe yeah it's very uh, in your yeah. face and kind of really um uh, the pace of it and the delivery of it is yeah. much more punchy and yeah. kind of impactful and yeah. uh stereotypically i don't want to like go into stereotypes yeah. but like stereotypically american or canadian and in, in that um it's much more kind of snappy yeah. and uh yeah. i mean it's just a cultural yeah cultural yeah, yeah. Thing. there's no and it's like no shame this, in having cultural this very kind of like uh cerebral swedish uh, you mm. know <laughs> like mm. photographer who's mm. you know you feel like you can almost like smell the tobacco mm. you know <laughs> and the coffee mm. and you know it's, mm. it's got a really nice vibe to it mm. um yeah so i think it's it's just a it's a pleasant change of pace for mm. people i think when they watch your videos mm. This this section of the podcast is basically us just bigging each other up. I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's great. <laughs> we should do this more often. <laughs> We've got such a nice logo. Thank it's like you. better than mine even. Do you want to know yeah. a hilarious thing? Mm. This logo, um, there's two funny things about it. Mm. Uh, one of them, I didn't design it. I, no? It was on Fiverr. Oh, right. cool. Yeah. yeah. This is when Midwinter Minis. Uh, this was something I was going to ask you as well. Yeah. Uh, people often ask me what Midwinter Minis means, and I'm like, it yeah. means nothing. Yeah. I thought it sounded cool. Yeah. Uh, I didn't expect the channel to take off in any form whatsoever. Mm. I wasn't invested in it. It was just a hobby. Yeah. It was just a, you know, because I have to, uh, you know, maximize everything I do. Mm. I couldn't possibly just get back into Warhammer and mm. be like, yeah, this is fun. Mm. I had to be like, you know, the painting tutorials aren't that accessible mm. on YouTube at the moment. Maybe I'll make some like really accessible ones. Sounds very familiar. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, I was like, well, I can't just call myself like good guy paints things or something. Mm. That'd be really boring or, and kind of weird. So I was like, I have to make it a bit, mm, you know, like a thing. Mm. So I was like, I came up with some stupid names like Forged stuff and I was mm. like these are all very generic names and I was like what about uh, uh, I really like the winter right it wasn't even winter when I decided on the name but I was just like I do like winter I love the snow yeah. I love it when it's cold yeah. I'm like a cold person um, I was like yeah midwinter minis bam there's a bit of alliteration yeah. it's perfect bam yeah. uh, and then I was like I need logo uh, and this was after I'd done my first video the yeah. sandstone necrons video was done yeah. and I was like I need to have an intro you know just like a logo mm. and say mm. you know whatever um <laughs> and I was just like Fiverr the day before I put the video out I went on Fiverr and I was like 
uh, somebody, you know, designed me a logo for, logo. you know, the it's a Midwinter Minis. I need like the social media pack, you know, it was $15 or something. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's that was that's the it. result. Um, and it's funny because it's, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but it's missing a, it's missing a bit of... Oh, it does, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, almost every single time I get any merch made or any t-shirts printed or anything, the people who are handling it do do the assume that it's a mistake yeah and they go like oh we'll just fill in the gap and it, it might have been a mistake but now it's part of the it's like the imp imperfection yeah that it's makes, the imperfection that makes it yeah 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 and, so now you like, now you know if, if yeah. there's a thing that's it has to have that bit missing mm. otherwise it's fake mm. um yeah so it's uh that's just the name means nothing and the logo has a mistake in it so yeah <laughs> that's the weird things 52 minutes yeah. why 52 um the name means nothing. Yay! Yay. Go team, meaningless. <laughs> yeah. No, I th it was the same because I had that same. I was, um, I felt uh, strange in a way getting back into the hobby because I, I'd not, I painted when I was a, a kid. Mm. You know, fantasy was the best thing around. Um, it's like Lord of the Rings, Warhammer, mm. um, that kind of stuff. Um, and then stopped at some point and then I started again when I think it was when I was on paternity leave as mm. we call it so I was with my kid who was a little baby you're at home you're in the middle of the night the baby's awake the baby sleeps the baby's awake the baby sleeps you're not really sleeping and I had these hours of like well what should I be doing and I've always like passed game stores probably for about three or four years mm. like you see the box and that means and like maybe. yeah you know six months later you pass again and like, mm, maybe and so then eventually i just bought a uh, a box a warhammer box mm. utterly confused because i was like what's this age of what mm. where's the i wanted the dwarves where's mm. the dwarves it's yeah. these big chunky ugly miniatures i now have a stormcast army so, <laughs> uh, but um so I got I got a box and I started painting and pretty soon I started like uh, checking out YouTube tutorials mm. and I just could not. I've now I probably I've acclimatized myself to just uh, being able to appreciate like pretty much anything that's on YouTube in a way when mm. it comes to YouTube tutorials. But I specifically remember then I put on it was mini axe videos. And like the first thing that happens is like heavy metal music mm. and this guy going like Wait <laughs> more <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, next Not <laughs> for me. You know. You just, I feel that you just stipulate though that you've you've spent time with I've Scott. Spent, and... I, 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 um, I've uh, spent time with Scott Miniac. Yeah. Uh, we're great, great, he's a lovely human being, yeah, great really friend, nice. and um, a great inspiration uh, when it comes to making videos and, and like, uh, yeah, I love him. Yeah. Uh, just not, this was my just not, not brilliant for introducing bookworm Swedes to no, Warhammer. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and so I just sort of desperately tried to find tutorials of people that were just like uh, a bit more chill. making such a big deal out of everything. Mm. Like just keep talk about what you're doing in a mm. calm voice and stop with all the like fancy stuff. And it was very sort of Warhammer focused mm. and I wasn't really in. It was like, oh, well, I just want to paint the minis. Yeah. And so then I was like, well, I could just make. I'll just film what I paint and try and see what I can do. And it mm. wasn't sort of a, I didn't have a goal or a mission or this big endeavor. It just felt like I'll just, I'll just do it. I'll yeah. I do it. And then I'll put it up and then I'll do it again. I didn't even think anyone was going to watch it. It was mm -hmm. just like a thing. And so then when you create your YouTube channel, you're sitting there. And so it's like channel name. Uh, uh, and I had the, the, uh, the Warhammer box that I bought. Yeah, uh, and I counted how many miniatures were in it. Did it say uh, on the box like fifty-two miniatures included? Like, it's on, uh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and so I just it became fifty-two miniatures. Oh, nice! That's a cool story, though. Yeah. Amazing. And since then, a, a lot of people have asked, and it's like, there's fifty-two months, or is it fifty-three months a year? And there's fifty-two chess pieces, or is there fifty-two <laughs> like decks, yeah. cards in a deck? You're like, I'm like, going to paint fifty-two miniatures and then sh stop the channel. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, fifty-two miniatures every week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it was. Um, 
that that was just it. And in hindsight, I kind of, I kind of would have liked to have a name that didn't have miniatures in it somehow. I know, but then More how, like how would people know you painted miniatures yeah. if you didn't have miniatures, yeah, no, miniatures yeah. in the how title? They, they, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to see it on their thumbnail. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Um, <laughs> No, just because sometimes I've I tried a while to do uh, book reviews, mm. which is utterly uh, terrible for mm. the channel because mm. uh, no one watched, and uh, it's the only time like people have, un which is funny, people have unsubscribed really? because you put up book reviews mm. and like this is not about Warhammer. Yeah, unsubscribe. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> and it's just so you like you need to kind of stick on on topic in a way, but mm. I I kind of also sometimes feel like I just want to have a channel where I can. It put anything up yeah like i built the scale model train thingy or mm. whatever and obviously that would still be miniatures but maybe at some point it would be things that are not actually miniatures yes and it would have been maybe fun to have yeah but on the other hand like 52 productions would have been silly Strange. as well so yeah not, we were talking like about that the the issues with that the other day as well weren't we where um we were sort of talking about this is maybe boring for people who aren't interested in prepare in, to get bored in it's sort of more back end YouTube yeah. stuff. Yeah. But we were sort of saying about um, neither of us really care that much about doing videos that we know won't be popular. No. Um, and, but there's definitely people who have that expectation of, of um, especially uh, people or companies that maybe want to run adverts or something on our, yep. on our channels where, yep. you know, they go like, whoa, that video that you just did doesn't, didn't hit the like views that you'd normally get or mm. like the last, you know, few videos haven't. It's yep. like, well, yeah, yep. like we do videos on different topics. Yep. And like, I, if, if uh, we have a video that, you know, we want to do a sponsored thing in or something. Mm, we'll, we can we can alter it to we'll make, entice people. Make to, the topic a mm. bit more, you know, like uh, generic yeah. or uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. But like a video on painting, you know, the uh, undead skeletons in Hero Quest is going to have quite a niche mm. uh, reach. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because yeah. not everyone's going to watch that. No. Not everyone cares. Not no. everyone has Hero Quest. People know how to paint skeletons mm. already. But it's part of a series, and you know, it's kind of completionist. Yeah. Whatever, um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's, it is a weird thing because it's it's. Um, I mean, I've, I've had issues. I think we all have had issues with uh, something going on with with just YouTube in the past year. Mm. Uh, I found it very difficult to, to like yeah, bring in people to the channel. It's, even yeah. though like I have more and more subscribers, yeah. but I guess less and less views on every video. Yeah, um, I think that's that's across the board with yeah. a lot of things. And it that has made me be more like, well, okay, mm. fine. I still want to make videos, yeah, just do and I want. still yeah. want to make them on the topics that I make them. Absolutely. I just have to accept the fact that this is the way it works now. Mm. Um, but the way it also like worked previously before that past year is like if you have sponsors, which is essentially what pays our bills. Like put food on our yeah. tables, and mm -hmm. like you know, if 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 you want to put the amount of time into video that it actually kind of takes to make mm. and do it regularly, um, you know, you need some kind of an income mm -hmm. from it. And so sponsors are great. But doing a sponsored video every now and again, so that you can just have the time to make the videos. Mm -hmm. But they pay you per per view, kind of essentially, yeah, uh, essentially. And so when the views go down, you get paid less um for for doing exactly the same thing mm. and the only thing that's changed is sort of an algorithm or something yeah, yeah. which um, you don't control which, which you don't control yeah, yeah. and it's uh, a weird thing because yeah. you know essentially we have the same boss mm. uh or like two bosses mm. in as far as it's like our audience but mm. also the platform itself is mm. you know uh, uh, sort of generates a uh, significant portion of our income yeah and it's uh wildly changes what uh, you know, it's it's doing without telling you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. or, no, it's kind of know. like you have a normal, yeah, normal job, yeah. and you do exactly the same thing. Just all of a sudden, one month, you'd like you get half the paycheck. Yeah, well, not even sometimes. Or even. Yeah, and, you're and, like, and, and then on? someone just says, "Well, this is the way it works now." Yeah, and you just have to live with it. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and and um, so it's um, that whole thing is is strange. I mean, I'm I'm. Always, like the past few years, been in a very sort of delicate 
kind of balance of the amount of time I spend making videos uh, and like work, mm. photography work. And I really like making videos, not only because I like YouTube videos, not only because I really like making the YouTube mm -hmm. videos, it's actually the only time where I can be my own boss. Yes. I don't have to wait for like an email or something no. like, can you take this assignment? Mm -hmm. I can just go to my to my bunker, yeah. start working on something and, uh, and, and think generate my own video. income, yeah, exactly. my own sort of input. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really favor that, even though if you calculate sort of what I get paid per hour, mm -hmm. it's vastly different mm -hmm. being like a, a, a photographer and, and sort of someone on YouTube yeah. at my level. Um, but I still need to have an income. Sure. And so if the ink, I was on sort of a bit of a sort of rise where mm. it's like, well, I could probably pretty much soon just not do all that much photography work. Mm -hmm. um, and you keep on working towards a little bit more of that goal. So mm -hmm. you spend more time on the videos mm -hmm. and like all of this. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm spending more time on the videos and I'm not making it's it, it's not a feasible equation anymore because mm -hmm. now I need to take photography work. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it's it's a it's a balance, especially I think where I'm at with yeah. like the amount of subscribers and 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 you know, it's not I couldn't rely only no. on on YouTube. No. I need another source of income. Yeah. Um it's difficult you know. because even um, you know, on midwinter minis like it it's you know regularly in the kind of top you know whatever top three kind of yeah. like uh in terms of like hobby painting it's sort of like general like generalist mm. channels mm. is that a fair thing you know it's not it's not kind of like a news and reviews mm. uh up, you know unboxings mm. kind of thing it's no it's, you're sort of it's a hobbyist doing yeah. a hobbyist yeah. stuff yeah um and you know no one's got, you know, we're like renting. It's, you know, we're, mm. we have very normal lives. Yeah. No one's like private jetting no. in our, in our industry. Nope. Do you know what I mean? It's, right. uh, everyone is on kind of very normal, uh, existence. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. Um, and that's, that's, um, I think a big thing that maybe some people don't realize when they kind of like meet you in person mm. is that like, you're really like very normal people mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> or just yeah. like leading normal there's, lives. There's, there's no fancy cars. There's no, no fancy houses. There's no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, even like the kind of top tier stuff, mm. you know, the, the people who are doing exceptionally well on like all fronts and like doing amazing merch and doing amazing, you know, kind of everything and have like mm. big community support and get really good ads and stuff. It's still, it's, you know, every, every single person would, would make more money if they were just a kind of like a, a manager of a, Oh, yeah. kind of local company oh, yeah. or, a, yeah. or a bank or yeah. you know whatever yeah um, and then yeah because then usually what happens like middle well, management like, within any yeah. kind of large oh, corporation yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you, there would be no fluctuation <laughs> in what no, you no, had no, as well no. which is <laughs> which is the terrifying yeah. thing sometimes no and, and i guess what happens as well like you've done right, when you re reach a certain sort of level mm. and thus income you, you take someone else on to help you out so mm -hmm. you don't actually have to work 200%. Yeah. You can just work the normal 100%. Yeah, yeah, Because <laughs> yeah. Because it is, I don't know anyone either that doesn't put way too much time in mm. in comparison to yeah. uh, what if, if, you, if, you, if you do like you would with a normal job, like how much time do you put in in, in regards to how mm. much it pays? Yeah, you know? that, that was the thing. And I can, when I look back at the stats and things and I go like, wow, like the channel had like crazy growth back mm. in like 2021. Isn't that incredible? And I was like, that was when I was working 80 hours a week. Mm. And I was like, I don't want to do that no. <laughs> anymore. Like no. I can't, I can't do no. that putting in that, you know, because I have kids now yeah. and I can't, I don't have the time to do that. No. Um, uh, all the inclination really is no. not good for you. So yeah. I can't, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's like necessary sometimes to scale mm. back and mm. just accept that that's a thing. Mm. So, um, yeah, and I'm still like making videos that I love and on topics that I love. Mm. And I think hopefully that still shines through. Do oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm jealous of, jealous that you have your Hattie. 
yeah. I'd like to have just to, and just to have someone else around. I know, right? It must be to a big, talk to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah and run ideas yeah. by, yeah. and be like, "Do you think that's a good idea?" Yeah. And they're like, "No, yeah. absolutely not." <laughs> like, don't post that. And I'm like, "Oh," <laughs> or like reading some of the comments, which is like, "Don't reply to that. <laughs> don't reply to that. Mm. Just delete it." Yeah. And I'm like, oh, "Fine." <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it must be uh, keeping you relatively sane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think having Nessa helps. Mm. I'm not. You know, just saying that for mm. for comic effect, she's mm. actually like keeps me sane. And also, yeah. if Takes you're, you out for a walk, yeah, that's the problem. That's I mean, I've I've been self employed for a while. Mm. My my very quickly running recapping what you just did. Mm. Um, my job history is basically I didn't go to university either. Mm. I came straight out of. I left um, my school on the last day of school. I left my island. I left Jersey. Mm. And I moved to Edinburgh mm. um, to live with my girlfriend then. Yeah. It was in 2003, um, and uh, I got be- r- real basic jobs. My first job was cooking breakfast at a hotel. I then um, uh, I started working in uh, electronics retail. <laughs> um, I did a brief stint selling uh, kilts <laughs> on the Royal Mile. <laughs> no, honestly, for like nice a year. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, then I started working at a, a deluxe furniture retailer, yeah. uh, ended yeah, up managing the store, mm. bizarrely. Uh, and then I quit that and I started working for a music retailer, yeah. like an instrument retailer, yeah. uh, just on shop floor staff. Uh, and then started doing the marketing for them and then left that and started working for Arturia, mm. which is why I'm wearing, well, I am wearing the hoodie. I started working for Arturia, mm. the French synthesizer company. And that's the job that I had before Midwinter Minis. Mm. And I was, um, you know, just kind of, it was essentially Friday evenings and you know, like the Saturday was when I would do, like I would paint something on the Friday evening, yeah. edit it on the Saturday and put it out. That's pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, it just, it scaled, it, it just started becoming popular. And mm. I was like, huh, maybe I'll turn on the, um, the ads on the videos and see mm. what happens. And mm. I was like, ah. I'm almost making the same that I am in my actual job, mm. just doing this for weekends. Mm. And I was like, maybe I should <laughs> consider doing this seriously. Um, so, yeah, that was a like an eye opener. Yeah. And then, yeah, but I've been I've been self employed essentially for ten years, yeah. or almost ten years. Yeah. Um, but the problem is talking about Nessa. This is pulling it back to what we we're talking mm. about. When you all of your hobbies are like sit down mm. hobbies <laughs> and mm. and your job is, is a, a sit down job. Yeah. You just never do anything. Oh. It's so bad for you. Yeah. So I was like, um, uh, and it was, I think it was just after my dad died. Uh, and I was like, do you know what? Life is short mm. and I really love dogs and I want a dog mm. and I'm just going to get a dog. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we went to, um, uh, like a rescue center and, we actually went in looking, we spotted a different dog on the website yeah. and went in and I can't even remember the name of that dog now, but mm. went in and they were like, oh, it's just been adopted today. And I was like, oh, mm, no, okay. No. I was like, do you want to have a look around at the other dogs? And I was like, yeah, I mean, mm. it was, it was kind of a, we don't, but, but we'll here, have a look yeah. around anyway. Uh, yeah. Mm. And we looked around and there were some like real crazy dogs and uh, we got, we got to the very end and Nessa was lying on um you know, they have, they have like kind of uh, hammocks almost. She was lying on it, but her body was on it and her head was entirely off it. And her head was just splayed out on the tile floor with her tongue flat on the floor. I was like, is that dog dead? And then she was like, Whoa. And I was like, she looks fun. And um, we said like, what's the story with this dog mm. down here? And mm. she's like, oh, she's um, she's a like a, a Corsa, oh, which yeah. is, um, you know, uh, so she'd come from like travelers in Ireland where um, they use, if you don't know what coursing is, it's where they um, like have competitions where they chase hares around fields and they need young, fast dogs to, you know, chase hares around and rip them apart. And that's what she was. Uh, and they get rid of them when they're, you know, two and they start slowing down. Mm. And she'd uh, had, she'd been in and out of a couple of people. She'd been adopted a couple of times and she's very high energy. She was then and a bit destructive and has big separate separation anxiety yeah. and isn't good with other dogs and has like a criminal record where she has, uh, she's killed a cat before. Mm. So mm. it was like, she's going to be work. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I can train dogs. That's mm. fine. Mm. Um, you, you can't train certain things out of them, but 
I was like, I, you know, I'm up for a challenge and it'll give me something to do that's physical, you know? Mm. Um, and we got her and yeah, she's just like, uh, feel like I bonded with her really well. Mm. She's, uh, but when I got her, she like, she, she didn't even know how to go up and down stairs. Yeah. She would like try and jump the whole thing <laughs> and, it, and she's very good at jumping, but yeah, it all, oh. almost always ended in disaster. And now got, she's dreaming. Yeah. Now she's dreaming and yeah, she's, yeah. she's twitching her feet. Yeah. You might get a. Quite often, I've been like recording voiceovers and things. I don't know if she like finds it quite relaxing when mm. there's things going on and mm. there's people talking. Mm. But um, quite often, when I'm recording voiceovers, I get interrupted by like. <laughs> She's obviously like having a real good chase in her dream. Yeah, um, but now yeah. she can do loads of tricks. I've yeah. taught her loads of things. Yeah, She's she very well behaved. She hasn't, She's... She, she hasn't eaten me. No, I'm still alive. She's much better around yeah. other dogs now. It's just and... your kids chopping my legs off. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was really sad when I when I um yeah and I um said bye to them on the Friday mm. and I was like dropping them off and I was like, right, and I'll see you on I was like, I'm busy this weekend, I'm gonna see you on Tuesday. And they're like, mm. Will we see Alex? Mm. And I was like, No, mm. no, and they're like, When will we see Alex again? And I was like That's a good when question. When we're in <laughs> Sweden? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to see them again. Yeah, have definitely. to do something up, we know. Definitely. Um but yeah, I, having like a physical thing and like going outside and having yeah. to do walks because she's quite energetic. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, really like breaks you out of that yeah. sitting down, doing nothing mm. thing. Uh, especially when you work at home and you, you know, you're self-employed working from home, uh, not doing much. And like, I've never had physical hobbies. No. Like I've never been into sport. Like, can you tell? I've never been. <laughs> I've never been into sports. I've never been into anything. I had. I had like the only time I've shown any uh, promise at sport mm. ever was when I was. I think I was like twelve or thirteen, and we started doing athletics at school, like with the with the things. Mm. And uh, I was pretty good at shot put and discus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was a sports day coming up, and I was like, right, I'm actually got a chance of being the best mm. here. Because uh, I'm like pretty strong, I'm quite you know quite tall, mm. broad. I've got good shoulders. I'm like I can chuck a discus real far. Um, <laughs> but I broke my arm. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's the only time I've ever broken anything. I tripped over my dog at the time and like fell against the wall and broke broke you, my. Uh, you missed your chance. Of yeah, fame and fortune. I know, right? Yeah, I could have been a famous yeah. discus uh, chucker. Yeah. What are they called? Discus discus lobber. Discus lobber. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Imagine that. I know. The money. A different life. Money yeah. and fame. Ferraris. <laughs> yeah. Olympic athletes don't get paid no. for competing. Do they? No. Um, they have to be amateur. That's the thing. You can't be no professional. how that works. Yeah, apparently. Not, apparently yeah. so. Hmm. Strange world. Yeah. Um, it'd be cool if there was prize money for painting competitions. Do you think people Is would... there not in some of them? Maybe. I think so. Some of the ones in over in that big far country in the... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what one, which one of them. I, I thought know. there was maybe one. I, but I'm, I'm. If you very, know of any, please very, let uh, us know in the comments. Yeah, I'm very uh, not great mm. at, at uh, all the different competitions yeah. and what they entail. This was my first th uh, sort of first competition I entered, mm. but also first sort of big competition where I could just see. What was on display, yeah, and uh, see the same winners as in all the other competitions, mm. yeah. <laughs> Some familiar names, familiar names, um, not undeserved, not at all. Superb painters, all. but yeah, it's yeah. um, uh, they're not just good at painting Warhammer models. No, <laughs> no, I mean they're, they're absolutely fantastic, uh, just, amazing yeah. artists. Mm -hmm. but I was, we were saying that on the way. I was saying that before, just this morning. It's like when something, in a way, I mean, I know the competitions have been around for for quite some time, mm -hmm. but the the level of painting that is sort of now mm. is is very different than sort of say like a golden golden demon twenty years ago. Mm, for sure, um, and it's like the people that are the, these great painters are kind of the people that invented. <laughs> The mm. style that everyone is competing in, mm. Mm. and they're still alive. Yeah, so and obviously, active. And yeah. Active. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so obviously they're going to win because mm. it's kind of like they've yeah. been in the journey of yeah. shape, being like the style of yeah. what we expect from like competition winning piece. Yes, um, whereas yeah. maybe in in forty years, 
Are we naming names here? Sure. Sure. So, I mean, she's having she, a real she, good she, dream. Yeah. Nessa is approving of this naming names. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know. Nessa. Nessa. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> She's having a really intense dream. She's kicking the wall. Um, so, uh, yeah, like you were saying, I think at some point people have sort of generally agreed that maybe like the way that Darren Latham paints, for example, is mm. like the gold standard of how to paint Warhammer models. Yeah. And when Darren Latham is entering the competition, exactly. he's going to win three categories. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he's an exceptional it's like the painter. Style yeah, and and. Uh... I mean, I know as well that people that aspire to become, mm. like, win awards, mm. like, call these people mm -hmm. or ask them, mm -hmm. you know, or help them, you know, can you can you help me? Do you have any pointers? Yeah. Uh, they're usually judges at competitions and stuff mm. like that. And so you go up to the judge after the competition and go, like, what would you change? What yeah. would you improve? And they go, and, everything. <laughs> just paint like me. Yeah, just paint. Just be better. <laughs> just be better. Um, and so, so it's like it's a... Um, a style created by this is just my perception mm. I, I, this is not the truth I don't compete I have very little input in like actually being able to paint like these pe mm. people do it's just what I can sort of how I perceive like a lot of the, the pieces that were entered uh, yesterday when looking in the displays it's like kind of going for the same thing mm. and the one who's the best at going for that thing yeah. might you know win and and it, 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 that kind of thing always kind of looks like something that one of the people that usually win has would, painted. Would do, yeah. yeah. We were saying that um, those things aren't always necessarily the most, I mean, they're the, maybe the most technically interesting for people who paint mm. and who appreciate the, um, the art of painting mm. uh, miniatures, but not necessarily the ones that are most interesting for a regular admirer of miniatures mm. do you know what i mean mm. um because i think definitely we we were talking about in one of our previous conversations we were talking about the uh golden demon last year at um, warhammer fest and um baharoth's entry mm. of, it was amazing of yeah. the ultramarine you know uh ceremony yeah is is essentially a work of art. It's mm. like a, an incredible sculpture yeah. and beautifully rendered painting. Mm. But the problem is, with Golden Demon, you are looking for a certain level of 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 um, attention to detail and painting and the mm. techniques displayed and everything. And when you have such a vast piece with so much going on, mm. to paint everything at that level that they're expecting would take you a lifetime. Mm. Yeah, if, if it takes 300 hours, 300 hours to it, paint one miniature, then yeah. if you've got 200 miniatures Literally in, in a, a build, lifetime. it's, it's yeah. uh, a So, tricky. you know, it, uh, something of that size and scale like necessitates that uh, parts that aren't the focal point mm don't have detail they don't have you know they might have an element of shading or an element of color or whatever but it's to guide the um the focus to the point that is the best painted yeah. and and kind of frame yeah. it yeah. and it's it, i think it's a real shame that uh that i don't feel like there is a kind of competition where that kind of thing could could rank yeah. at all because yeah. even though when you go and you see it, you're like, this is the most spectacular thing mm. in the cabinet, mm. like by far and away. Mm. The things that are, the things that won are incredibly well painted mm. in a very specific way. And they look undeniably beautiful mm. and amazing. And they definitely deserved, uh, you know, what they got. Mm. I'm just saying that there is a, I think there should be something like a different category or something or a different, yeah. um, a rubric or I mean, maybe, judging maybe, yeah. method to, to catch things that are, stand out yeah. bonkers yeah. you know exceptional i'm not saying that the butthole tank would be <laughs> would be considered <laughs> within that but um if there was a butthole category if there was a if there was a if category a for warhammer buttholes i would hope to bring home the gold imagine um, the, imagine the cabinet yeah oh god <laughs> <laughs> imagine the, the smell mm. Mm.
I was actually speaking of the smell. I was yeah. quite surprised, like pleasantly surprised. No, Salute yesterday. Yeah. No, no, there's a, there there's a no... stigma and a, and a yeah. certainly a stereotype that um, wargaming things and mm. conventions and things have a have a certain odor. Mm. Yeah. And um, with with only a minor couple of exceptions, uh, you know, I think everyone. I actually complimented on some people and how mm. nice they smelled. Mm. I, I, I'm a disher out of random compliments. Yeah. I don't know if you saw sometimes. I, I heard your, uh, wow, you've got big hands. I was a bit more sweary than that, yeah. as far as I remember. Mm. It was one of the last people I met of the day. Yeah, it was just like, guy, as we were walking out. And I was like, shook his hand. And I was like, I've got pretty big hands. And I was like, your hands are enormous. <laughs> and he was like, wow, thanks. <laughs> and his girlfriend was laughing. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, um, no, but it, it would be fun with... Uh, <laughs> Change the topic. Change the topic. Please. Back, back, to, back, <laughs> yeah. back to the number one. No, because it, I guess because it is miniature painting mm. categories, I guess it could be fun if it would be competition, which was like a miniature competition. Because mm. then you could have like, I don't know, most fun idea, fun, yeah. best sculpt, mm. I don't know, uh, best conversion. And you mm. could still do that and not have to be a good painter to win. Sure. Yeah, because people's skills lie in different areas, yeah. and and there yeah. are incredibly talented sculptors and and you know painters and mm. um, even like visual storytellers. They're not mm. necessarily. Uh, um, and I mean, a lot at, of the golden demon stuff is like. Mm. I mean, the people that that win them usually are yeah. marvelous sculptors as yes. well, because usually they work with like sculpting miniatures. Yes, uh, but it, so you really. But it's like it's like the perfect human being kind yeah. of a thing that don't, I think don't, not very many of them exist. Yeah, I think. Um, um, uh, like uh, Clayton's golden, or the Slayer Sword winner mm. from last year was mm. a really good example of that because it's just a absolutely ridiculous mm. piece that mm. is huge. Mm. Every part of it is immaculately painted. Mm. Like I saw it in the flesh, it's mm. ridiculous. Mm. And there's wild sculpting involved, mm. really difficult things like the resin pours and making the water. And yeah, yeah crazy. Um, very deserved on that part. Mm. But. Uh, mm. Yeah, just things like that. They're, they're more about the spectacle. Essentially, what we're after than... is categories where we could win. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the solution here is we make our own painting competition where Indeed. only we can enter. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> um, no, but maybe there is call for some kind of more... Uh, creatively open painting mm. competition mm. that isn't uh, necessarily so... Uh, like I don't know how to describe it Games Workshop focused in that particular oh. um, like Golden Demon painting style so yeah. I feel like I mean, that, that, that particularly bores me Yeah, if I'm going to be honest it's like um, um, there's, a, there's a, always the Golden Demon focus which just seems like especially there there's like a way to paint it mm. which is glorifying mm. Uh, the company sculpts, which is fine. Mm. The great sculpts, please glorify them. But that's it. Feels me. That's like the purpose of the thing. You, that, that's, and everyone that I've talked to that try and win a golden demon, it's like, well, you need to do this. Mm. You need to do that. You need mm -hmm. to do this. You need to do that. And all of the things you need to do is especially is essentially trying to make this um, product that a company is selling look as good as possible. Mm -hmm in the way that they want it presented mm. you're know, like um well what about just being creatively free to do what you want yeah um, but there's plenty of like competitions other competitions mm -hmm. where you don't where you can enter whatever you want yeah and i find that a lot more interesting um than um than the golden demon if i'm going to be honest yeah i'd rather just see because especially because there's such, a, think there's such a world of miniatures yeah, out there and you, yeah, I don't yeah. get to see them. Mm, you know? mm, there's different I, manufacturers and different, different manufacturers yeah, yeah. And, and, and different like games. Solo, and, uh, you know, co um, well, not content creators, solo uh, sculptors yeah, who are just creating yeah, their own yeah. thing. And like people who sculpt in 3D, yes. uh, that can be really great at what they do. And, and like, even people who, um, you know, they exist, people who base their designs on Games Workshop things, but take them to places where places, they yeah. haven't been before. Yeah. And, and a lot of them are really exciting, you yeah. know, where they absolutely wouldn't mm. be allowed in any official mm. thing. Because they... going back to what you said about the fact that we could display these in real life mm. uh, and not just show them off in videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same goes for um, 
or the other things that are out there. I yeah. mean, ninety percent of everything that you see is uh, Games Workshop painted stuff. Mm. Like if you're in a game store or, or whatever, mm. um, and it would be just greatly fun if it was like uh, Bolson and Topman from Frostgrave Ghost Archipelago, or yeah. whatever this is, because <laughs> um, that would never happen. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but it, it it'd be fun if it if it did happen. Mm. A bit more of that. Anyway, was that that was a that was a mi- mi- mini rant. Everyone needs a mini rant. Yeah, as long as it, the whole thing isn't a rant. Mm. I feel like we've avoided the um, the typical trap of a podcast of the things happening after an event where people are just like, "Let me tell you about all the things I hated about." <laughs> there was no bronze. If yeah, there yeah, been yeah. bronze, I would have won. The food was pretty good. At the I Excel. had terrible food. Did you? Yeah. What did you have? I, uh, brown food. What kind of brown food? It was brown noodles with brown chicken with a brown sauce on it. Ah, we had a nice burrito. It was oh, good. Yeah. It's quite tasty. I blame Bill making stuff. Ah, they're a bit stingy on the pork, but um, yeah. it was quite tasty. Yeah. I'm, 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 it was all right. And it was my stomach is fine today, so yeah. that's it's a good sign, right? Yeah. Because sometimes things taste mm-hmm. tasty at the time, and mm-hmm. then the mm-hmm. next day, trouble. <laughs> um, should we wind down? What do you think? Yeah. I think we've chatted for quite a long time. It feels like... Uh, What's the time run, now? Um, well, the coffee's... I've run out of coffee and I've run, run out, out of coffee water. and run out of water. We're getting so dry. I've probably at least an hour. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So that was the end of the second... I mean, the first episode of the Midwinter Minis podcast, mm. if there is such a thing, mm. was the um, episode we did with Mavericks Paints. I after, watched that. It was really nice After Warhammer Fest, yeah. yeah. Which is really funny because... Mav was also because he was like sick. Wasn't Mav was struggling was, that day, yeah. yeah. And when we thought it was, you know, just kind of post post three day event malaise where you're feeling a bit down and you got a bit of a sore throat. But no, mm. he he was traveling home the next morning and <laughs> he messaged me basically as soon as he landed. And was like, yeah, I took a COVID test when I got home and I've got COVID. Mm. It's like, oh, oh Mav oh. on a plane. Yeah, I know we're yeah. all fine, but um, yeah, he's uh, he's fine, obviously, mm. but um. Yeah, poor him. Yeah. He sounded pretty rough in that video. Yeah. So that was the uh, experimental episode, I suppose. This mm. is the, I mean, this is the, it's still experimental. Everything we do is experimental. It's That's the fun kind of Kind of the joy of, and the fun of, of having a YouTube channel. Creative it's kind endeavors. of also being able to do what you want within certain yes. parameters. Yes. Uh, kind so, of like joining, doing a piece for the Golden Demon. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so episode two, that is episode two. Thank you so much, Alex, for sharing your time and uh, your passion. And I hope if um, you've listened thus far, you have definitely gone over to Alex's channel and subscribed already. Um, And likewise, if you don't know who I am, Mm. maybe consider hitting the- Go check him out. Check him out. Hitting the correct buttons to see future stuff by Mm. both of us. Definitely. And uh, thanks for having me. You've you know, been so welcome. You've, you've been a very pleasant guest. That's good. I hope uh, I fed you well. <laughs> you've more than well. More than well. We've got sausages coming out of my ears. You didn't right. finish your black pudding. I didn't finish my black pudding. But Nessa, but Nessa's had me. N- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nessa had it. Um, I, I wanted to, to end with... Uh, 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 it's a combination of a, of a gift and a dilemma. Oh. Because um, I can't take this home with me. No. Yes, you can. No, I can't. And I don't want to, because I want to leave it here as a, a, a new custodian. Of this a series. souvenir? Ah, yeah. oh, thank you so mm. much. Huh. You can, uh, what, that's awesome. you, you can look at it daily, it daily and say, that's definitely a bronze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if under any circumstances it would have taken the bronze. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's so beautiful. Are you sure you don't want to dismantle it and no, take it back with no. you? That's very kind. Thanks. I've just been nervous. I'm done with being nervous of like the whole way here. I was like, I'm going to break it. I'm okay. going to break it. Nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, would you like to, um, would you like to take something from my cabinet? Oh, maybe. Should we have a little look after this is done? It's like, I was sure I had 2,000 points of awards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's... Now it's just yeah. 1,985 points. Yeah, where's, where's that Gretchen living? gone? <laughs> <laughs> no, when I moved studio, I think I'm, I saw I lost a few things on the way, but I was very haphazard with my um, with my transportation of everything mm. I had. Mm. My entire sandstone Necron army just got 
um, chucked into a little bag, hmm? just yeah, a so carry funny. bag. Yeah. I mean, nothing broke. No. So maybe that's the future of mini transportation. Mm. Plastic bags. Yeah, just get rid of all your really heavy, expensive uh, transport mm. cases and just put them all in plastic bags. Mm. You'd be fine. <laughs> I've seen them. They're fine. Yeah, you're right over there. They look great. So thank you so much for joining me, Alex. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone, for listening thank and you. watching. Yes. And I hope you have a very pleasant rest of your day slash night slash life. And <laughs> we'll catch you next catch time. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. And that was the end of the Midwinter Minis and 52 Miniatures podcast. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to both of our channels, Midwinter Minis and 52 Miniatures, if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I had a great time with Guy and Hattie and everyone I met at Salute. Hi, and thanks for being great. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.